Okay, we'll keep going. I'll make all these different sections because I don't want to make a mistake here. But uh, let's just have a look at it now. We're, talk we're still talking about your heart. Now, once you reach out to God, once God speaks to you, say Jesus speaks to you, come to him. Do not try to fix your life up first. That's the important thing. When God speaks to you, don't say to yourself, I'll fix my life first. No, don't do that. Just come to Jesus. Just come. Because if you try to do that, say you try to fix up your life first, basically you're making a mistake. In fact, you've got the cart before the horse. Simply come to Jesus. Open your heart to him. Confess your sins, shortcomings, and Jesus will help you to get your life in order. And that's the important thing. Just come to Jesus, give Jesus your life as it is, just give it, go to him, give your life to Jesus and he will help you to sort things out. I've got things in my life that I know for 25 years I've had to uh, wrestle with. But finally Jesus has sorted things out. He'll do the same to you. Now, you probably do understand that you can be in the kingdom of God. You, you can be in the kingdom of God. But you also need to understand that in God's world, the kingdom of God, there is no such thing as immor immorality, adultery, filthiness, thieves, drunkards. And you have a huge list there. Nothing unclean will get into the kingdom of God. So that means that while you're here in the world, you need to sort things out. That's the key. It is Jesus' words that cleans us. And that is why we need to transform your mind using the Bible to do the will of God. And that's very, very important. Jesus himself talks about that. God's word cleans us. And that is true. What do you think? It's getting a bit complicated, isn't it? There's a bit more involved. Well, but it's very simple, isn't it? You trust your Bible. In your heart, call to God from the heart. That's all we're talking about, really. All this other information is here, but those, those two things we've covered. But we need to also understand that, really, you're not going to earn your way into heaven. There's no question about that. We always fall short and that's why we need to spend a lot of time cleansing ourselves regularly. Put another way, you need fresh starts. You do need fresh starts. I've always needed a lot of fresh starts all the time. And there is no number of times you can come to Jesus. The disciples did say to Jesus, how, time should, how many times should we forgive people? Jesus said seven times seven. So whenever a person comes to you to have your sins forgiven, you can come to Jesus. The prerequisite is your heart needs to confess to God. It is your heart that needs to confess. And ask for forgiveness, then you'll have a fresh start. In fact, if you confess your shortcomings, your sins if you like, if you come to Jesus, confess your sins, your shortcomings, that mistake, that sin, if you like, is tossed into the deepest ocean, never to surface again. Unless, of course, you bring it back all the time, which we do, don't we? We say we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We come to Jesus, we confess our sins, we say, yep, not going to do it again, but then we do it again. That's what happens. Now think about now, I don't know, things are getting complicated here, but it's simple in a sense. So there is a possibility that in your life you can be in the kingdom of God, but you may not be able to really sort things out of your life completely, which means your motor is running maybe 50%. So you're doing God's work, but you're not as successful as you could. That's the problem, isn't it? 
if you can't clean up your life completely, there is a possibility you are a injured, injured, injured Christian. You don't really want that to happen, do you? No, you've got to try and sort things out, get things right. And you do that through the Bible and through letting your heart talk to Jesus Christ and get the help you need to sort things out. Now, that means it could be that in your heart you actually want to sort things out, but the habit can be so strong you cannot cut it loose. You're injured, but you're still in the kingdom of God. And I think that is the point. The problem in your life could be such that you cannot be in the kingdom of God because you may not want to give it up. Something could be happening in your life which actually excludes you from the kingdom of God, whatever it is. There's a lot of issues in life that unless you disown it, you cannot be in the kingdom of God at all. But you can be in the kingdom of God and you can have habits which are too strong and you can't cut them away for some reason. But not serious enough to disown you or kick you out of the kingdom of God. See, that's very important to realise that. So basically, you can have a habit which is so strong, you can't sort it out, but you can still be in the kingdom of the, you can still be in the kingdom of God, but you're an injured sort of Christian and you just manage. Now there's one other issue, rewards. Once you get to know your Bible better, you'll know that Christians receive rewards from God. From Jesus. When you serve him, you get rewards from Jesus. The prerequisite is you only receive rewards if you do what Jesus wants you to do, not the other way. That is why we are told that is why we are told as you go into the kingdom of God, all the things that you did for God will go with you and you die. And that is very true. If you're in the kingdom of God, you serve the Lord Jesus Christ and you do what Jesus wants to do, the only way you can know what Jesus wants you to do, you need to go through the Bible. When you do that as a Christian, then your works, if you like, go into the very kingdom of God when you die. Now that's very wonderful, isn't it? But if you've been rebellious, you know, this is sort of quite a few... Christians really are rebellious, there is a possibility that when you go to heaven, you really didn't do the things God wants you to do, and if you did any sort of rewards or something, uh, your rewards can be burnt away. And basically, you get no rewards, but you just fall into the kingdom of God, and I guess it's better to be in the kingdom of God than not. Of course, it is better to please God and Jesus Christ because then you're doing what God wants you to do. As we are told, he is pleased with you and when you ask, the, ask for things, he will give you things. He will help you. The good things you want, he'll give it to you, which is absolutely great. <laughs> wow, wow. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Actually, on this website here, you actually, I've got a note here saying, if you're sort of not quite organised now, you can have a question here. You can actually click on this website here, and uh, you can ask questions. Isn't that interesting? Are you talking with your heart? Yes, that's what this is about. So, number one, you look at the Bible. You decide if it's the Bible you're going to follow. You believe it. Once you do that, then you make sure your heart does the talking. If your heart does the talking to God, I think you are basically 100% in the kingdom of God. Should I do one other thing? Well, I think I'll just finish here, I think. 
If you've understood what I have said, you're in a position where you can definitely talk about things like and find out about God who he is, God who he is, find more about him, Jesus Christ who he is, more about that, more about the cross, sin, the resurrection, the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of things to learn, you know, really, as a Christian. In the kingdom of God, you come in, then you start to learn about the kingdom of God, know more about God, more about Jesus. You'll understand about the invite which Jesus has to you, where he says, come and know more about the kingdom of God. There is no doubt there is much to be learnt about God, Jesus and the kingdom of God. But as we have discussed, once you have understood the Bible a bit more, if your heart speaks to God, and you come to Jesus, have your sins forgiven, and you come to Jesus, you are then adopted and you go into the very kingdom of God and you are a true son of God. You actually are the true Israel. And when you die, you'll arrive into the promised land, heaven, where there are places to live. John 14 talks about that. When you die, there are places to live. And Revelation talks about places too. Go to 21 and 22 of Revelation. I look at uh, John 14. I can guarantee you, if your heart has reached out to God, Jesus, you are in the kingdom of God. I can guarantee that. And you'll know that. You'll know that. It'll become more as a reality as you continue live your life and know more about Jesus Christ. It'll become more real day by day, which is what's happened to me. And millions of Christians are saying, I'm not a, a, a lonesome man here as a Christian. There are millions of us all around the world. And many, many millions of Christians have wonderful walks with the Lord Jesus Christ. But we do need to remember certainly basic things. Is it the Bible is our food. That's what Jesus said. Man is not to live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So Anne and I, we're in that position where we have a walk, which is a real close walk with the Lord Jesus Christ as a couple. And we know that when we go, we're in the kingdom of God. Now we're actually moving into the last section now, but let's just switch off now.